Yes, it is very well known. Fine. So today we will start with methods of proof. Fine. We will start with methods of proof, and we will cover what is an argument, how arguments are made, what is a premise, assumption, hypothesis. Then we will go forward for implication, contrapositive. Then the concept of theorem, proof and disproof. Then what is empirical proof? Then mathematical proofs. After that, we will cover propositional logic to design proofs. Fine. And we will cover different forms of proof. If we are given an argument, how can we prove it through the mathematical statement? Then truth using truth table for proving then methods of direct proof. Fine. After that, we will cover indirect proof by contrapositive proof by contradiction. And at last, we will cover the mathematical induction. Fine. So these are the things that we are going to cover now. Let me start. Methods of proof. Fine. Now, we know that in discrete mathematics, we are using propositions. Fine. Proposition is any statement for which we can have truth values, either true or false. Fine. And we can combine these propositions. Suppose we have two propositions, P and Q. So we have different types of connectives, different types of connectives through which we can con combine these statements. And these connectives are like and or fine and further we can combine these statements to form an expression this is an expression fine so in this way we we are saying that we can have different types of statements and we can combine these statements with the help of connectives and we have different connectives like Yes, conjunction, disjunction, and so on. Finally, we will see how these connectives are forming statements. Fine. Then we will see what is a mathematical statement. What is a mathematical, mathematical statement? And after that, we will see how we can compute whether the mathematical statement is true or false. This we can view with the help of truth table or we can prove also. Fine. Let us see one example. Here we are using the term argument. An argument in a mathematics or a logic is a finite sequence of statements. How we represent a statement? We represent a statement with the help of a small letter like A, B, C, P, Q, R, S. Fine. So let us see. We are having a group of statements like P1, P2, P3, P4 and so on up to Pn. And see P1 and P2 and P3 up to Pn, they imply P. It means here each statement is called a premise. These are premises. These are premises. Fine. Technical term for these statement is premises. And these premises are joined together using the connectives. And what are they implying? They are implying P. Fine. Uh, Ma'am, excuse me. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, are you moving the slides or you are still on the first slide? Means uh, because I'm moving the slides, sir. Uh, but for me, it is only unit two method of proof. Is then on... second slide is introduction. Third is argument, sir. Our Any students, better? are uh, you able to view my slides? Any yes. student, please respond. Yes. We just see the unit two method of proof. Yeah, they are on the first slide, ma'am, only. Uh, they are unable to see uh, uh, the 
Yeah, now it is coming argument. Is it visible now, sir? Yes, yes, ma'am. Now argument is visible. Argument slide is visible. Now? Yeah, it is argument slide. Next slide. I'm I'm moving next, next, next. No, no, it's not coming. It is only argument. Now it is yes, 15th, no. uh, that 15 to checklist two logical statements that is coming. Yes, sir, now is it visible? Yes, yeah, it is. It seems that now it is moving. Now is it visible? Yeah. Fine, sir. Yes. So yes. students keep uh, giving feedback to ma'am because otherwise you will be uh, you will not be getting proper learnings. So give your feedback yes, whenever slides are not moving. Fine. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank. You. Okay. So this is our first slide. Fine. Introduction. Here I have shown you that we are connecting different statements with the help of logical connectives. Is it visible? Yes. Okay. Now we are using argument. See, here we are having prepositions from P1, P2, P3, P4 up to Pn. Fine. Then each statement here is known as premise. Can you view premises? P1 and P2 and P3 up to Pn. It implies P. These are the premises. Now we will see. These premises are also known as assumption or hypothesis. Assumption or hypothesis. Fine. Suppose I am writing P1 and P2. It implies P. So left hand side, left hand side is known as premise or assumption or hypothesis. And what we have to state that whether, whether they are deriving P or not. So P is what? P is conclusion. Fine. Is it clear? This statement is clear. Now, can you view this slide? We can say proposition. Yes, class. Yes. Is this slide visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Proposition P follows logically from proposition P1, P2, P3 up to P1. How can we write this? We can write this like P1 and P2 and P3 and P4 up to Pn imply P. How can we say? We say that proposition P follows logically from the propositions P1 to Pn. Is it clear? Is it clear? So, so P, P must be true. P must be true when these are true. So P must be true when these propositions are true. Now I will take one more example. This is known as implication. Suppose we have two propositions R and S. One proposition is R and another proposition is S. When we are writing it like this, it denotes that S is true whenever R is true. It means S is true whenever S is true whenever R is true. Fine. Or its contrapositive is R is false whenever S is false. So directly we can say S is true whenever R is true. Or its contrapositive is R is false whenever S is false. This is the contrapositive form of the above implication and this sign is sign of implication fine now what is a theorem what is a theorem okay suppose we have to prove a statement p implies q if we prove this we say that it is a theorem it means the statement that is proved to be true is called a theorem. 
Yes, Mem, I have a question. Yes. What's proof? First what? of all. Yes, what proof? Suppose yeah. I, I say A plus B is greater than or equal to 10. Fine. And I, I put here values 5 plus 5 greater than or equal to 10. Here we can see that left hand side is equal to right hand side. It means we have proved. We have proved. In yeah. this way, we will prove. We will have different methods of proving. We will see them one by one. This is the simplest example of proving. This is the mathematical form. We have, I have used arithmetic calculation to prove that left hand side is same as right hand side. Fine. In general, in general, when we write statements in form of implication and we prove it to be true we say this is a theorem and technical words we can write the statement that is proved to be true is called a theorem is called a theorem fine now we will see what type of theorems we are having and how we will prove them we have another statement known as disproof disproof fine suppose we say that we have a proposition p and p is true is our statement fine we can go in different way instead of showing that statement is true we will prove that it is false that not p is true this is known as just opposite of proof this is known as disproof of p we had to prove that p is true but what we proved, we proved not P is true. Such a proof is known as disproof of P. And what is P? P is our proposition. P is our statement. And this is known as disproof. Fine. This is known as disproof. Now, we have different methods. We have empirical method to check whether the statement is true or not we have empirical proof we can show it empirically also suppose suppose we have one statement that for all integer n square minus n plus 41 is a prime number so we how can we prove it empirically just start putting values for n is equal to 1 we see we see that answer is 41 for n is equal to 2, result is 43. For n is equal to 3, result is 47. For n is equal to 4, result is 53. And so all are prime numbers. So we can conclude that, that the above statement is true. So this is the empirical form of proving. This is empirical form of proving, but this is tedious and it don't works in all the cases. Fine. So, mathematical proofs are always better than empirical proofs. Fine. Now, we will see how mathematical proofs could be done. To come up with the different techniques of mathematical proof, we make use of propositional and predicate logic. And that is why we had studied propositions. And how we are representing proposition? We are representing proposition in the form of P, Q, R, S, T, all small letters, all small letters. Now see, few points we have to remember, important points that we have to remember while using proofs. Fine. Every statement is either true or false. In the first class, we had studied about the propositions that every statement can be either true or false. Every statement can be true or false. Fine. So this is the first point. Second, we have logical connectives, logical connectives like disjunction, conjunction, negation, implication, bidirectional. These are what? Logical connectives. And these are joining our statements, joining our proposition like P and Q. Yeah, not P and Q implies R. In this way, the logical connectives are being used. Fine. Next is a statement can have undefined term called a variable. A statement, statement can have 
an undefined term called a variable. For example, Px. Yes, x is a child. So x, x is a variable. X is a variable. Variable means x value can vary. For example, I can I can write n x such that x is a number. X is a number. So x is a variable. So x value can be 1, 2, 3, 4. So x is representing here variable. A statement can have undefined term called a variable. Fine. For every variable, we have a quantifier. This quantifier is for all. And this quantifier is for there exists. Are you able to view my slide, class? Class? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma okay. This is for all. For all. We can. These are what? These are quantifiers. Okay, for all. Then there exists. We know that all birds fly. So for all. Okay. Some student have passed. There exists some students who have passed. So we have two types of quantifiers. For all, we have this sign. For some, for some, yani if there exist, this is the symbol. So we should know how the quantifiers are represented. Then, fine. Two logical statements can be equivalent if the two statements answer exactly the same way on every input. Suppose we have one statement P, we have another statement Q. And the suppose we input one here, one here, and we get the same answer, then we say input two, two, we get the same answer, then three, three, we get the same answer, then we can say they are equivalent. P and Q are equivalent. P is one of the logical statement. Q is one of the logical statement. And we are providing same set of inputs to P and Q. And we are getting same answers. So we can say that P is equivalent to Q. These are the few concepts that we need to know. We need to remember. Fine. To check whether two logical statements are equivalent. Suppose you are given any statement of the form P or Q implies any, any anything. R and S, any statement of this form. And you have to check whether left hand side, whether left hand side and right hand side are equivalent. You have to see. So you can use the truth table like we are use, we were using in earlier sessions, or we can reduce to the similar to the simpler form. We can reduce this statement, we can reduce this statement and see whether the reduced statements are equivalent or not. Or directly, we can also use truth table. Fine. We will see examples now. So, how we can use propositional logic to design proofs? Our chapter is about proofs. So, how we have studied propositional logic. Under propositional logic, we have studied conjunction, disjunction, negation, fine, implication, bidirectional, bidirectional, and so on. And we have see, seen their precedence also. Precedence also. Fine. So now we will see how propositional logic can be used to design proofs. Because in this chapter, we are looking forward for proof. Different types of proof. Fine. So, what is a mathematical statement? What is a mathematical statement? How we will say that we are having a mathematical statement? Fine. Mathematical statement. A mathematical statement comprises of premise. Premise means assumption. Fine. It means these are what premises or assumptions. Fine. And what they what they deduce? They deduce conclusion. 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 Fine. So a mathematical statement. So a mathematical statement comprises of a premise or the assumption. When assumptions are satisfied, the statement deduces something. 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल सी ए इज सेट ऑफ एग्जाम्शन एंड बी इज डिडक्शन लेफ्ट एंड साइड वी आर हैविंग ए इन राइट एंड साइड वी आर हैविंग बी लेफ्ट एंड साइड एंड राइट एंड साइड ए ए सेट ऑफ एजम्पन एंड बी इज डिडक्शन फाइन नाउ ए इम्प्लाइज बी वी आर हैविंग स्टेटमेंट ऑफ द फॉर्म ए इम्प्लाइज बी हाउ टू चेक इफ द स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट हाउ वी कैन चेक वी हैव टू चेक वेदर द स्टेटमेंट इज ट्रू और फॉल्स वी हैव टू चेक सो हाउ वी कैन चेक फाइन if somehow we find that this is correct this is correct then we have to prove we have to prove that yes it is correct so how we can prove there are different techniques of proving and now we will study these techniques one by one let us see the above example a a is premise and b b is conclusion conclusion fine one of the one of the simplest way is one of the simplest way just split a and b split a and b suppose we have to prove that a implies b if a can be splitted so we can split a we can split b and further we can see whether these are equivalent or no not we can check from here also fine so in this slide we have written a premise is a conclusion is b depending on whether depending on whether whether a or b or both can be split we have to split them if we can further split them into smaller statements and see how smaller statements are connected this we are going to do it now fine if we are able to prove that the statement a implies b is correct then we say that this is a theorem if we can prove that statement a implies b is correct then this is called a theorem fine theorems are formed in this way up suppose we have a problem to prove and our problem is simplest problem a implies b a implies b and let let b can be written as b is equal to b can be written as c and d c and d so wherever we are having b we can write it as c and d so what is our problem a implies b a implies b so it is equivalent to it is equivalent to a a as it is we have written a as it is instead of b what we have we have written c and d from where we got got this value from here so now we have written a implies b is same as a implies a implies c and d from where we got this value we got this value from here because b is equivalent to c and d fine so a implies c and d and it can be written as a implies c fine and a implies d a implies c and a implies d in this way we can further split fine this these are the things that we should know how to split making use of what is given to us yes now see one example is this slide visible to all of you class yes ma'am yes ma'am now is the slide visible yes ma'am okay now i am navigating is this visible no yes ma'am i am changing the slide are you view i am changing the slides no no ma'am no okay okay fine now are you able to view i am changing slides yes ma'am yes okay yes ma'am good so now let us see one example let us see one example fine let us see one example 
give an argument now this is the example of proof fine give an argument to show that mathematical statement is true what is the mathematical statement for any two sets a and b a intersection b is contained in a is true do you know such theory yes ma'am okay suppose we are having a set a we are having a set b we are having a set b and we have one element in the intersection 1 2 and 4 5 element 3 is in the intersection of a and b fine is it clear do you know do you know ben. this concept this is set a yes, yes this is set b and this is intersection of a and b that is 3 fine is it clear and now you know that 3 is contained in set a and 3 is contained in set b because 3 is common just see 3 is in set a yes 3 is in set b yes so 3 is contained in set a and 3 is contained in set b fine see give an argument to show that mathematical statement mathematical statement what is the mathematical statement this this is a mathematical statement and you have to prove it that it is true for any two sets a and b now you know what are sets a and b here in the diagram i have shown two sets i have taken a is equal to 1 2 3 and set b is having values 3 4 and 5 and 3 is common so we i have represented 3 with the yellow color fine so what is a intersection b 3 is 3 contained in a yes because 3 is belongs to set a also so see the statement see the statement for any two sets a and b a intersection b is fully contained in set a is true diagrammatically you can show yes class diagrammatically you can show see right hand side i have shown two sets two sets a and b the element 3 is common so a intersection b is 3 and see 3 is subset of subset of set a and set a is containing elements 1 2 and 3 so in this way we can prove this is one of the way in which we can prove the above mathematical statement as true yes this is the easier form of proving have you understood understood this class yes ma'am okay then now there is another way look left hand side left hand side theek hai another form this is the easiest form there is one more form in which we can prove this statement as true let x be any arbitrary element we have taken x and x comes under intersection of a and b so if we are having set a set b and this is the suppose intersection portion so this is x so x it means x belongs to a it means x belongs to b by definition of intersection so we can say x belongs to a and above statement is true so there are two ways in one in one way we have drawn sets we have drawn the intersection and we have shown that the element element which is in the intersection of a and b is yes a is 1 2 so in here the 3 3 is subset of a set a set a is having element 1 2 3 another way to prove was another way to prove was what we had to prove for any two sets a and b a intersection b is contained in a is true for any two 
sets A and B. Fine. A intersection B is contained in set A is true. Fine. So what we have done? A intersection B. A intersection B. So A intersection B. Suppose X belongs to A intersection B. It states X belongs to A. X, if X belongs to A, we can say X is subset of A. X is contained in A. So there are two ways. We have used set, set, example of set, and another one is we have proved. Fine. So in here, see the left hand side where we have saying that let X be an arbitrary element of A intersection B. It says that X belongs to A and X belongs to B. And by definition of intersection, we can say X belongs to A. And this is true for every X in A. For every X in A means for every element in A. Fine. Is it clear? So what we have done? We have proved. This is one of the type of proof. Now you know what is proof? What is theorem? Yes. Hmm? Yes? Yes, ma'am. What is theorem? Theorem is a statement that is proved. Yes. Suppose we prove it. We prove it. This is true. So this will become the theorem. Is it clear? If we are going to prove it as true, this will be the theorem. Fine. Hmm? So we are having different methods of proving and disproving. Now let us see one term. Conjectures. Have you heard of this term earlier? Conjectures. No. Hmm? If suppose we have this statement, we have this statement and we are unable to prove, we are unable to prove, we are unable to prove it as true. We can't prove it as true. We are unable to prove this as true. And we can't even disprove it. We can't say this is false. We can't say this is true. We can't say this is false. Fine. Then what is this? This is conjecture. For example, see, for example, for every small n that belonging to n, it means for any number or for every number belonging to natural number, if n is even and n is greater than 2, then n is sum of 2 primes. Is this, is this okay for every n? Can you try class? We have n. This is a natural number. Fine. We say, we are saying that n is even. n is even. And n is greater than 2. Then, n can be represented as sum of two primes. Can you give me any example, class? 14, 7 plus 7. 14. 14 is an even number. Okay. And 14 is greater than 2. And 14 is sum of two primes. 7 plus 1. Okay. Fine. Any other number? Suppose I am having 16. Now, tell me. 16 is even? Yes. 16 is greater than 2? Yes. And what is 16? Is 16 sum of 2 primes? Yes or no? No. No. How? How can we form 16? 8 plus 8? Then? Or? Or? 11 plus 5? And what about 11 and 5? What about 11? 11 is prime or not? Yes. And 5 is prime yes. or not? Yes. 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 And 8 is not prime? 8 is not prime. So 16 can be formed using 8 plus 8. And 16 can be formed using 11 plus 5. Fine. So that is conjecture. We don't succeed in proving a statement as true. And we can't disprove it also. And such type of statements are your conjectures. Is it clear?
Is it clear? Yes, so yes ma'am. We can't even yes, prove it, yes. and we can't even disprove it. So these are conjectures. Fine. Okay. Now, looking at argument. What is an argument? Any one of you? What is an argument? Collection of uh, proposition. Yes, collection of collection of propositions. Yeah, premises. Fine. Like. P1 and P2 or P3, whatever. So these are what these are your arguments. Okay. You have to find looking at an argument, you can find whether it is valid or not. How you can find the new term. Now you are having one new term, valid or not. And for whom we I am using this term? I am using this term for argument. You have to find whether any given argument is valid or not is valid or not fine so for this what we can do we can use truth table we can use truth table this is a formal logical tool so we can say that truth table is also a formal logical tool to find whether the argument whether the argument is valid or not fine let us see how it can be used are you able to view my screen class yes yes ma'am yes okay. ma'am so we have one question p p fine p p is a proposition Maya sees the movie. Fine. Maya sees the movie. Then we have another one, Q. Maya won't finish her homework. P states Maya sees the movie. Q states Maya won't finish her homework. So, argument is in the form P implies Q and Q it implies p so at right hand side we are having p in left hand side we are having p implies q and q and we have to find whether the argument is valid or not we have to find whether this argument is valid or not we have to find whether this argument is valid or not are you seeing i am highlighting it we have to find whether this argument is valid or not what we will do just create the truth table can you create truth table for this yes p implies q what are the results of p implies q yes class p implies q for true false combination it gives false for true false combination make it very clear for true false combination the result is the result is false for true false combination the result is false okay now what we will do we will create the truth table we will create truth table see the truth table first column is p second column is q third column is p implies q P, because we need it, P implies Q. Then fourth is this, complete argument. Complete argument. That is P implies Q and Q. Fine. Now you can create this table. Q. True, false, true, false. And for P, true, true, false, false. Now P implies Q. P implies Q is false. P implies Q is false for the combination true and false for the combination true and false the result is false fine now p implies q and q see the result true true it will give true false false is it will false true true it will give result true false true it will give result false now you can see the result this is the result this is the result. Fine. 
दिस इज द रिजल्ट क्लियर है नाउ इज इट क्लियर दिस इज द रिजल्ट एंड नाउ यू हैव टू फाइंड वेदर द आर्ग्यूमेंट इज वैलिड सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट कॉलम सेकेंड कॉलम थर्ड कॉलम एंड दिस इज द फोर्थ कॉलम और वी कैन ऑल्सो से दिस इज द लास्ट कॉलम सो लास्ट कॉलम गिवस द ट्रूथ वैल्यूज ऑफ प्रेमाइस फाइन एंड फर्स्ट कॉलम दैट इज पी पी इज फॉर द कॉन्क्लूजन सो पी इज टी फाइन ओके सी हेयर the argument will only be valid this line see this line which i am highlighting the argument will only be valid if whenever both the premises are true the conclusion is true so this p this is the conclusion p because we are having p in the right hand side so p is the conclusion this one and what are the premises premises are p implies q yani ki p implies q and q so whenever both are true the result should be p should also be true p q p implies q p q p implies q fine and next is p implies q and q p implies q and q fine so true false true false for p we are having true true false false p implies q p implies q will be false for true false combination so true 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 then p implies q and q so p in p implies q and q so for true true we are having true theek okay, hai fine for false 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 for true 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 for false 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 true false now see our statement left hand side we were having this left hand side we were having p implies q and q and right hand side we were having p it means for every for every two true true here under p we should have true theek okay. hai so let us see one by one this is one of the premise this is another premise so here we are having true true so under p we are also having true fine then here we are having true true but under p we are having false so can we say that this is a valid argument yes or no no is it clear class is it clear yes, yes. Hmm? Hmm? so this happens this happens in the first row but not in the third row therefore the argument is not valid hame prove karna tha we need to prove what we have to prove yes class what we need to prove what we need to prove this again i am explaining i know few of you have not understood what was the case p implies q p implies q and q and q fine and it was giving us p it was yes p we have to prove this prove whether this is our valid argument or not valid argument or not fine what we have done we have used we have used truth table p q then p implies q then complete p implies q and q fine and we have to see whether left left hand side result for truth values is shown 
at RHS also. For every true value, the P should also be true. Only then we can say that the premises are valid, valid implicate. Now P true, false, true, false. True, true, false, false. P implies Q is false in the case of true false combination. So here we write false. All other are true. Then oring, oring, ending is to be done between P implies Q and Q. So P implies Q and Q. Do the ending. True, true, true. False, false, false. True, true, true. True, false, false. So this is our table. Fine. This is our table. Now we have to see whether this left hand side is equivalent to RHS. How we can see it? Now see what are the premises? We are having P implies Q and Q. And see for RHS what we are having? P. Now we have to see in case of true, true, in case of true, true, are we having true in P? Yes. So this is good. Then in case of this true, true, are we having true in P? No. So we can't say that this is a valid argument. Is it clear, class? Yes. First row is satisfying. Yes, First row is satisfying, but third row is not satisfying. Fine. So we have done proof, proof with the help of truth table here. And what were a question? We had to find whether the argument is valid whether the argument is valid so the argument is valid for this not for this so we can say the argument is not valid fine this was we were proving with the help of truth table we were proving with the help of truth table here the first row is satisfying see here true true and for both the truth p value is true but here it is true, true, but here P value is false. So whenever premises are true, fine. Row one, the conclusion is true. If the conclusion, uh, if the conclusion is true, then in that case, the P value should have been should have been true for every true combination. Fine. Now we have different forms of proof other than the truth table we have different methods of proving one of the method of proving is direct proof one of the method of proving is direct proof let us see how we can work with the direct proof yes a direct proof of p implies q is a logically valid argument logically valid arguments fine Fine. Like we say P to Q1 is true. Q1 to Q2 is true. Qn to Q is true. We conclude that Q is true. For example, if we can, we want to say that P implies Q is true. Then we can say from P to Q1 is true. From Q1 to Q2 is true. From Q2 is some Qn is true. Then we can say from Qn to Q is true. So it implies P P implies Q is a valid argument and it is true. So let us see how direct proof works. A direct proof assumes hypothesis. And what is hypothesis class? What is hypothesis? What is premises. Yes. Whatever we claim is hypothesis. Whatever we claim is our hypothesis. Fine. If if I say sky is blue, sky is blue. So this is my hypothesis because I am claiming the sky is blue. Fine. Whatever I claim, that is your hypothesis. So the direct proof, direct proof assumes hypothesis is true. Then logically deduces the conclusion. It means if P is true, then Q is true. This is the direct proof. See the cases. See the cases. Now we will do direct proof. We are going to example of direct proof. Fine. What is our question? Question is if B 
is any real number greater than 3 can you know do you know what uh, real number what is a real number yes what is a real number minus infinity to plus infinity fine so b is any real number theek hai b is any real number which is greater than greater than equal to 3 fine and you have to prove that 2b square is greater than b plus 1 ka square just prove it how will you prove so this is direct proof is one of the tricky methods to prove fine now we know that b is greater than equal to 3 how we know that b is greater than equal to 3 it is given it is given that b is any real number greater than equal to 3 this is our equation 1 it is given now if we say that b is greater than 3 so we can also write b minus 1 is greater than equal to 2 in both the side we have done minus 1 so here we got b minus 1 and for 3 3 minus 1 we got 2 so here we can write b minus 1 is greater than equal to 2 is it clear can we write this yes so this is our second equation the first equation b is greater than equal to 3 second equation from b we have subtracted 1 from right hand side 3 we have subtracted 1 so we have got equation number second that is b minus 1 is greater than equal to 2 now we are simply squaring the both the sides so left hand side becomes left hand side becomes b minus 1 ka square and our right hand side becomes 2 ka square up up till now is it clear class is it clear yes this is somewhat tricky method so we can write b minus 1 ka square is greater than 2 if i can write that 10 is greater than 5 so i can also write 10 is greater than 4 i can also write 10 is greater than 3 i can write 10 is greater than 2 if 10 is greater than 5 obviously 10 is greater than 4 obviously 10 is greater than 3 10 is greater than 2 so we can if we know that b minus 1 ka square is greater than 2 ka square so what we can write also b minus 1 ka square is greater than 2 obviously when b minus 1 ka square is greater than 4 we can also write that b minus 1 ka square is greater than 2 fine because we are having symbol greater greater than 2 now open this you know a minus b ka square what is what is the output of this a square yes class a square yes plus b square minus 2ab 2ab fine so we have expanded yes this. yes we have expanded this fine yeah b minus 1 ka square is equal to b square fine plus 1 square plus yes minus minus 2b fine so b square minus 2b plus 1 is greater than 0 is it clear till now yes and we have removed the terms except b square we have move the term to right hand side now we are having b square is greater than 2b plus 1 fine is it clear is it clear yes or no yes. now adding we have added b square to both the sides ek minute i will use another slide also fine so this is this is the case we have done this Is it visible to all of you, class? Yes. Yes. See here. See here. We were given b is greater than equal to three. Yes, this was our equation one already given. What we have done minus one from both the side. For here we got b minus one. 
and right hand side we got 2 so this is our equation number 2 now we are squaring both the sides we are squaring both the sides so b minus 1 ka whole square is greater than equal to 4 fine this is tricky method so here we can also write b minus 1 ka whole square fine is greater than 2 yes then b minus 1 ka whole square is greater than 2 we can expand it we can expand it then it becomes b square minus b 2b plus 1 it is greater than 2 it is greater than 2 is it clear then we are shifting shifting is done only b square is in left hand side it is greater than fine sign is changed minus 2b becomes 2b and 2 minus 1 becomes 1 fine so what we are getting we are getting b square is greater than 2b plus 1 now we are adding adding b square to both side so left hand side becomes 2b square fine right hand side becomes b square plus 2b plus 1 when we squeeze it in the formula of a plus b ka square we get b plus 1 ka square it is 2b square is it clear is it clear yes. hmm? it is very it is in very simple form 2b square is greater than b plus 1 ka square and what we need to prove 2b square is greater than b plus 1 ka square so we have proved yes ma'am this is the di direct proof yes this is the direct proof method one we have proved with the help of truth table another method we we are using here is direct proof method is it clear yes. starting from what is given and deriving what is required so we got 2b square is greater than b plus 1 ka whole square is it clear yes but every time you can't use direct proof for every type of question what type of method we need to use depend upon the type of problem that we need to solve so this was the direct proof method fine let us say let us take one more example let us take one more example which method we are using direct proof fine fine okay the square of an we have to prove the square square of an even integer is an even integer the square of an even integer is an even integer fine okay can can you understand this for all x for all x yes class yes do you know this for all x yes for all x is it for all x fine for all x belonging to z belonging to z z is representing all integers all integer n represents natural number natural number fine z is representing here all integers it means x what is x x is variable x is variable for all this is for for all so for all x belonging to integers fine for all x belonging to integers now you now is it clear yes class now is it clear yes ma'am for clear. all x belonging to integers px implies qx fine and what is given given is what is given px says that x is even so all x here are even and P Q X implies X square is even. This is given. P X means X is even. Q X means X square is even. Fine. And we have to prove this. 
for all x belonging to set of integers p x implies q x we have to prove this we have to prove this and these are given p x means x is even q x means x square is even fine it means q x is same as p x square q x is same as p x square because x is even x square is even so we can say q x is same as p x square and what type of integer we are given integer even the square of even integer is an even integer fine so let us start let p x be an even number let p x be an even number fine and we can assume that if p x is true yes so x is equal to 2n for an even number you suppose you are having 6 so you represent 6 as 2 into 3 you are having 8 as even number so you represent 2 into 4 you are having 10 as even number so you represent 2 multiplied by 5 so what is this 3 4 5 this is n this is n so we can write x we can write x is equal to 2 n is it clear yes Last bit, yeah. x is equal to 2 n for some integer n for some integer n integer 3 4 5 for some integer n this is from the definition of an even number see we can represent any even number as a multiple of 2 see suppose i am having 2 to 2 into 5 i am having 12 as an even number even so 2 into 6 i am having 20 so 2 into 10 i am having 50 so 2 into 25 so this is what this is n n so 2 n and this is what this is p x where x can be 10 x can be 12 x can be 20 x can be 50 and so on so p x is equal to 2 n is it clear class yes fine yes ma'am so, so x is equal to 2 n for some integer n from the definition of even number so squaring both side i got x square is equal to 2 n ka square 2 n ka square means 4 n square and I can represent this 4n square as 2 multiplied by 2n square. And what was our 2n square? Our 2n square? Even number. Yes, even number. So x square is even. That is qx is true. Fine. This is the simplest method. We haven't done anything. We have simply, simply used whatever is given. So the square of an even integer is an even integer. Because here... 2n square, it means x square is even. And 2n, it means x square can be represented in the form of 2 and something. It means it is an even. And so we can say that this is true. Is it clear? Class, can you do this? Yes. You have to use simple, uh, simple definitions, fine, for direct proof. So we have done two examples of direct proof. Okay. Now we are coming on to indirect proof. Can anyone tell me how we have gone through today? From where we started and what we have done? Anyone? We had started with the argument. And yes, whether an argument is valid or not. Then we have started the proof. Fine. For proof, we have used truth table. Fine. Then we have used the method of direct proof. Now we have come to indirect proof. And under indirect proof, we have proof by contrapositive and proof, proof by contradiction. Fine. Layout is clear? Yes, class? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We have started with the valid arguments. Then thereafter, we started with the proof. We have used truth table, direct proof, and now we are on to indirect proof. Under indirect proof, we have contrapositive and contradiction, and we, we will use these methods. Contrapositive. Contrapositive. 
see contra positive suppose we are having a statement of the form p implies q okay what is its contra positive just reverse just bring q to left hand side and p to right hand side and negate them this q has come to the left hand side fine negation of q and p has gone to the right hand side negation of p so it means the contra positive of the statement p implies q is not p implies sorry not q implies not p now you know contra positive yes okay in simple english like sentence how we can write if it is sunday i go to the market simple statement if it is sunday i go to the market what is its contra positive if i am not going to market it is not sunday is it clear yes yes ma'am p implies q if it is sunday i will go to the market what is contra positive if i am not going to market it is not sunday reversing reversing okay q is coming to left hand side with negation p is coming to right hand side with negation in simple english like statement this is the example this is known as contra positive contra positive fine so we have to do proof by contra positive fine okay proposition p implies q is logically equivalent to its contra positive that is p implies q is logically equivalent to not q implies not p is it clear yes is it clear so you have to for contra positive you have to use this p implies q is equivalent to not q implies not p is it clear yes okay fine another way how we can write this another way how can we we can write this a implies b is equivalent to not b implies not a is it clear and when we Thank use you. this type of yes when we use contra positive proof method in case where where this can be reduced for example for example if we are having b is equal to c or d further fine it can be reduced further as b is equal to c or d in these type of examples we use contra positive cases like c a implies b is equivalent to not b implies not a it is equivalent to as we are, we can see that b is equal to c or d c or d so we can replace b by dekho b is equal to c or d fine not b not b not b will be equal to not c and not d how can anyone state how de morgan's law by using d morgan's law d morgan's law we can write not b is equal to just reversing the sign just reversing the sign and putting negation b is equal to c or d not b is equal to not c and not d by using d morgan's law so instead of writing not b here i can write not c and not d implies not a is it clear as yes as not c or d is equal to not c and not d we can use this fine so proof by contra positive fine so what we have to do we have to assume the conclusion to be false and then we will prove the hypothesis is also 
false. We have to prove conclusion is false. Then we will prove then hypothesis is false like this. Like this. Proof conclusion is false and then proof hypothesis is also false. Like if it is Sunday, I go to market. Then if I am not going to market, it is not Sunday. So we have to work like this way. Fine. Is it clear? Yes. That is why it is contrapositive. Assume the conclusion to be false. Prove hypothesis is also false. Like P implies Q is equivalent to not Q implies not P. Fine. Clear? Now we will work. Which method we are working on? Any one of you? Which work, which method we are working on at present? Contrapositive. 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 Okay. Now we will see question. Question. Fine. Question is for any integer A and B. And what is integer? Can anyone tell me what is integer? Integer, how we are going to represent integer? From one, one to two, plus two, three, four. Three. From? Yes, yes. From? From one, two, three, four, five. These are natural numbers. What about integers? From minus infinity to plus infinity. Yes, 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 yes. Fine. For any integer a and b, what is written? a plus b is greater than 15 implies that a is greater than 8 or b is greater than 8. We have to prove this. Have you understood the question, class? Yes, yes. ma'am. This is the question. Okay. For any integer a and b, a plus b greater than or equal to 15 implies that a is greater than 8 or b is greater than 8. Yani, if on adding a plus b, if on adding a plus b, fine, if on adding a plus b, we get suppose we have 9 plus 8 is greater than 15 fine suppose this is a 9 is a and b is 8 8 plus 8 1 16 1 17 17 is greater than 15 so what the statement is a is greater than or equal to 8 yes b is greater than or equal to 8 yes so we have to prove fine for any integer a and b a plus b greater than equal to 15 implies that a is greater than 8 or b is greater than equal to 8. And we have to prove by contraposition. Okay, proof. We have to reverse it. See here? We have to reverse it. We have to prove p implies q. Fine. And how we have to do? We have to convert not q implies not p. Is it clear, class? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. 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 So, co doing contra positive, we can write if A is less than 8 and B is less than 8, then A plus B is less than 15. Can we write this? If yes. A is less than 8, if A is less than 8, fine, and B is less than 8, then A plus B is less than 15. Why we have used less than 15? Because here we were having greater than and equal to. So while reversing, we will use less than. Fine. Is it clear, class? Here we have yes, A is greater than equal to. That is why we have used less than. Here we were using B is greater than equal to. That is why we have written B less than 8. We have So for proving P implies Q, what we are doing? not q implies not not p fine so contra positive if a is less than 8 and b is less than 8 then a plus b is less than 15 okay okay now very simple we assume for any integer a and b a is less than 8 and b is less than 8 fine is it clear? So, A less than 8, what it means? If it if I write A is less than 8, 
sorry if we write a is less than 8 what we, what will be the numbers 1 2 3 seven. 4 5 6 7 8 sorry remove the 8 7 it means a is less than equal to 7 is it clear class yes ma'am okay yes okay okay if i write b is less than 8 okay so what will be the b's values 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so we will say b seven, less seven. than equal to 7 is it clear less than equal to 7 okay. yes, yes ma'am ma so what we have written a is less than equal to 7 and b is less than equal to 7 is it clear class yes so, yes so we have written a plus b is equal to maximum it can be 14 a plus b maximum value can be 7 maximum value can be 7 so we can write a plus b is equal to 7 plus 7 is equal to 14 reverse we have reversed everything so a plus b is equal to 7 plus 7 is equal to 14 so for so for a is less than 8 and b is less than 8 a plus b is less than 15 is true is less than 15 is true fine therefore for any integer a and b a plus b is greater than a equal to 15 when a is greater than equal to 8 and b is greater than equal to 8 just contra positive is it clear yes. is it clear and we have done nothing we, we have done nothing just contra positive fine this was the question this was the question for any integer a and b a plus b is greater than equal to 15 it implies a is greater than equal to 8 and b is greater than equal to 8 by contra positive, we have done if A is less than 8 and B is less than 8, then A plus B should be less than 15. And yes, we have proved it. A plus B is equal to 14. It means A is less than 8, B is less than 8, A plus B is less than 15. Fine. Is it clear? Therefore, yes. for, for yes, A greater than equal to 8 and for b greater than equal to 8 the result is greater than equal to 15 you will do you will be able to do it only if you will practice fine but i think concept is clear yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am okay. yes, ma so we were doing proof by contra positive this this you have to make very clear proof by contra positive p implies q is equivalent to not q implies not we have done this way this is by contra positive fine okay ma'am excuse me yes. in contra positive the if we negate the greater equal to sign in it will become less than only not less than equal to yes 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 okay. suppose I write A is greater than equal to 10. Okay. A is greater than equal to 10. Fine. Now, for contra positive, I am writing A is less than. Because 10 here, 10 is covered here. 10, 11, 12, 13. Fine. So, 10 is covered. 10 is already covered. Okay. So, the partition is like this 10 11 12 13 and what we are left we are left with 9 and so on fine so partitioning is this way is it clear fine that is why we have written like this greater than equal to 15 a is greater than 8 and b is greater than 8 fine so this was the main thing that there uh, a plus b is greater than equal to 15 implies a is greater than equal to 8 and b is greater than equal to 8 but by contra positive now 8 was covered here 8 was already covered here then if a is less than 8 and b is less than 8 then for this also we have covered this because 
15 result was covered here so 15 less than 15 we go for less than 15 to prove it and that's what we have proved here for 14 for values less than less than 8 result was less than 15 in this way fine because equal to and greater than were covered that's why fine now there is one more question one question is for any integer a if 3a plus 1 is even then a is odd then a is odd this we need to prove this we need to prove for any integer and what is integer what is integer what values are covered yeah. under integer integer is you know the plus the positive numbers it is a start from zero zero one to n is your natural number from mm -hmm. zero you are having your whole number okay and integer is covering all values integer is covering all values okay whether it is positive or negative yes yes integer is covering all value for any integer a if 3a plus 1 is even even means you know even multiplication of 2 2 4 6 8 yes, then you know. a is odd then a is odd we are proving it by contraposition so we can write if a is even here a was odd no? here a was odd and we are forming its contra positive. So what we are writing, if A is even, then 3A plus 1 is odd. Then 3A plus 1 is odd. Fine. Now you know how we have formed this statement using contra positive. Our statement was for any integer A, if 3A plus 1 is even, then A is odd. And how we have from the contra positive if a is even then 3a plus 1 is odd we assume that a is an even integer a is an even integer okay by definition of even integers okay 3a plus 1 is equal to yes it is even then 3a plus 1 is odd 3a plus 1 is odd so odd number means 2 multiplied by something plus 1. What is odd number? What is odd number? A plus Two. 1. Yes. <laughs> plus 1. Because this is even number. This is even number. And odd number is even number plus 1. This is what odd number. Is it why? That is why we have written 2m. Is it clear why we have written 2m? Class why we have written 2m? Because this is forming even number. And we are talking of odd number. So even number plus 1. That is that is 2m plus 1. 2m plus 1. Okay. So 3a plus 1. 3a plus 1. This we are representing it as odd. 3a plus 1 is equal to 2m plus 1. By definition of odd integer is it clear 3a plus 1 a a is equal to a is equal to 2k a is equal to 2k we are making 2 outside and keeping 3 inside so 2 3k plus 1 2 3k plus 1 3k plus 1 that is 2m plus 1 says that m is equal to 3k and what we have done, we have done simple, simple mathematics. Fine. So here, 3a plus 1 is equal to 2m plus 1 by definition of odd integer. Fine. By definition of even integer, what is even? Even is a and a can be represented as 2k. 2k, twice of any number even number and how we can represent odd number odd number 2m plus 1 this is odd fine 
सो देन थ्री ए प्लस वन थ्री ए प्लस वन विल बिकम थ्री ए प्लस वन विल बिकम ए वॉट इज योर ए ए इज इक्वल टू टू के ए इज इक्वल टू टू के सो वी कैन मेक टू के सो थ्री इंटू टू के प्लस वन सो टू थ्री के प्लस वन फाइन टू एम प्लस वन टू एम प्लस वन एंड वॉट इज टू एम प्लस वन इट इज एन ऑड इट इज एन ऑड सो वी हैव सोन दैट फॉर एनी इंटीजर ए थ्री ए प्लस वन इज इवन देन ए इज ऑड इज इट क्लियर is it clear yes we have reversed we have reversed it we have reversed yes, it yes ma'am was given 3 for any integer a if 3a plus 1 is even then a is odd just try it on your own only then you will uh, learn this is for the odd this is for the even simply we have used that simply what we have used we have used that odd number is twice of m plus 1 and we have used even number even number is twice of k twice of k fine and we have substituted values here and we have find out that for any integer a if 3a plus 1 is even then a is odd now we are proving using contradiction we are proving using using contradiction fine we are using we are proving using contradiction yes assume hypothesis to be true and conclusion to be false hypothesis to be true and conclusion to be false hypothesis to be true and conclusion to be false theek okay. hai and then so at last show that whatever you have taken is what show that assumption is a contradiction fine it means that the original values were true Now let us do with the help of an example proof by contradiction a implies b it is equivalent to not b and a is equal to false to prove a implies b sometimes is it is easier to prove not b and a is false we will see it with the help of one examples contradiction what is a claim class what is a claim claim what is what do you mean by claim claim means hypothesis claim means hypothesis means or we assumption. can say claim means assumption claim is your hypothesis or assumption okay okay so for every integer n for every integer n if n square is even then n is even for every integer n if n square is even then we can say that n is even and what is contradiction what is contradiction let us assume there there is an integer n such that n square is even then n is odd then n is odd n square is even then n even for example 16 16 means 4 ka square Four is even. Is it clear, class? Is it clear? Yes. Is it clear? Na, yes, like ma'am. Like you can say hundred. Yes, ma'am. Hundred yes. means ten ka square. So you are saying that ten is even. Fine. Can you can you give me an example of a square where n is odd? Nine. Yes, yes, but nine nine, nine is not nine. even. Give me even number. Give me even number. We have no such than number. Just try. Eleven. Eight. 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 Can we have? Eight yeah. is square. No, 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 no. We need complete square. Any number? Any number? 
11. Yes. I think no number. Yes. I think no such that number. We don't have such no number. number like that. Okay. So here we were having question. For any for every integer n, if n square is even, then n is even. Fine. Now you understood the question. Class, now you understood the question. Yes. If n square is yes, even, it means n is even. Okay. N square is hundred. So 10, it is even. Take n square is 64, 8 8 the 64, 8 is even. N square is 16, 4 4 the 16, it is even. Is it clear? Yes, it is clear. Yes, 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 yes. yes. 36, 6 6 the 36, n is even. This is the meaning of a statement. For every integer n, if n square is even, then n is even. And now what is contradiction? Contradiction is that if n square is even, then n is odd. Then n is odd. So what contradiction we are taking? We are taking n is odd. This is the meaning of contradiction. Is it clear? Is it clear? So we will go with this. We will go with contradiction. Fine. Okay. By definition of even integer, we know that n square is equal to twice of a as n square is even n square is even 10 square only 100 100 is even so we can represent 100 as 2 into 50 that is 2 50 is a 2a we can represent even numbers as 2a okay by definition of even integers we can represent n square is equal to 2a for some integer a by definition of odd numbers Odd integers, we can represent n is equal to 2b plus 1. Because 2b is even plus 1, it is odd. Fine. Is it clear? Till now, yes, is it clear? Yes, we can represent, yes. We can represent yes, yes, n, square yes. Equal to n square is equal to 2a. n is equal to 2b yes. plus, plus 1 for odd. For odd. This is for even. So we can write n square is equal to 2b plus 1 ka whole square. Is it clear? This is the first. Yeah. n square is equal to 2a for even. For By definition of what you n is equal to 2b plus 1. Now, n square is equal to 2b plus 1 plus square. So, we get n square is equal to 4b square plus 4b plus 4b plus Yes. Class. Yes, class. Nothing, sure. Yes. Okay. Is everything ma fine? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, just can you a little bit clarify between contradiction and contraposition? In contraposition, we totally yes. We can reverse and negate the statements. So we, we were Yes, yes. In contrapositive, we were completely reversing. In contradiction, reversing, yeah. yes. In contradiction, only we have yes. done this. N is even, we have made N is odd. Partial, partial. Fine. See. See the case of contra positive. Okay. In contra positive, we have completely reversed. A is get A plus B greater than equal to 15. A greater than equal to 8. B greater than equal to 8. We have done A is less than 8. B is less than 8. And A plus B is less than 15. Completely reversed. Fine. Yes, ma'am. Uh, let us come to this case. Contradiction. Yes, contradiction. What we are doing? For every integer n, if n square is even, that n is even. But what we, what we are taking? There exists an integer. Okay, says so that if n square is even, n square is even, then n is odd. Fine? Yes. This. 
दिस वी आर डूइंग दिस ठीक है ए इम्प्लाइज बी ठीक है नॉट बी इम्प्लाइज ए इज फॉल्स प्रूविंग दिस वे फाइन सो वॉट वी हैव डन वी हैव टेकन फर्स्ट फॉर ई वन केस एन स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू टू ए फाइन इट मीन्स स्क्वायर ऑफ एन ईवन नंबर इज ऑल्सो ईवन सो इट इज इक्वल टू टू ए इन केस ऑफ ऑड इंटीजर एन इज इक्वल टू टू बी प्लस वन एंड वी आर स्क्वायरिंग इट फाइन वी आर स्क्वायरिंग इट सो वी हैव दिस रिजल्ट नाउ नाउ सी सी दिस इक्वेशन आई एम हाईलाइटिंग इट येलो एन स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू फोर बी प्लस फोर बी स्क्वायर प्लस फोर बी प्लस वन and n square is equal to 2a now you have seen two equations in both equation left hand side is n square left hand side is n square have you seen these two equations first is n square is equal to 2a and second is n square is equal to 4b square plus 4b plus 1 so as both the left hand sides are equal we can equate right hand side so here right hand side is 2a And here, right hand side is four b square plus four b plus one. So we can write two a is equal to four b square plus four b plus one. Fine. And what we got? See, last uh, red color highlighted minus one by two is equal to two b square plus two b minus a. Yes, we got this value, na? We got minus half minus one by two. And do minus one by two represent integer? Yes, class. Yes. Yes. No, ma'am. No. What we have done? We have written for even integers that n square is equal to two a. We have written for odd int odd integers that n is equal to two b plus one. then we have taken the square in both highlighted equations as our left hand side was equal that is n square we have equated this fine right hand side and finally what we got we got minus 1 by 2 so minus 1 by 2 don't represents integer which is a contradiction which is a contradiction it means our earlier statement was true and this case is false this is false fine this is true so by using contradiction we have proved is it clear yes ma'am is it clear you will uh, you will make it clear only if you will practice it okay and then another type of proof is by the help of counter example counter example fine it means if p is false i can say not pre not p is true if p is false if p is false i can say not p is true this is known as counter example then we have another method that is method of principle of induction have you heard of it principle of induction yes have you heard of it earlier principle of induction yes ma'am yes. yes okay what is yes, ma means is ma okay suppose you have n natural numbers theek hai 1 2 3 4 up to n and their sum is equal to n into n into n plus 1 by 2 and you have natural numbers from 1 to n okay here we can represent them as small n belonging to capital n capital n is a set of natural numbers okay for any number n for any number n belonging to set of natural numbers we have to prove that 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n is equal to n multiplied by n plus 1 by 2 fine we call p n as the predicate this is the predicate 
and we represent it by p n where n n is a number is a number belonging to set of natural numbers is it clear you have to prove and here here you use principle of induction here you prove using principle of induction okay what it actually means suppose i have x square plus x plus 1 fine suppose x belongs to n how can we i say that this is true if if this is true for x ki value 1 good if x it is true for x ki value 2 fine if it is true for x ki value 3 yes if it's true for x ki value 4 if it is true for x ki value x ki value n for all n belonging to set of natural numbers it means if we say it as a for a it is true yes for a plus 1 it is true yes for a plus 2 it is true yes for a plus 3 it is true yes then only it means for all n for all numbers belonging to set of natural number if this is true then we can say that we can prove this statement in the similar way suppose we have to prove that 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n is equal to n into n plus 1 by 2 for each natural for each n belonging to set of natural numbers it means for p is equal to for p n n is equal to 1 we can prove this for n equal to 2 we can prove this for n equal to 3 we can prove this n equal to 4 this is true up to n for n this is true so we can say fine this is true in this way we have to prove and this is through the principle of induction here we use inductive logic fine it means for all for all this statement is for all for all n n is variable n is variable n's value will vary fine for all n belonging to set of natural numbers pn is true okay only if it can be shown to be true for each n it means for p1 true for p2 it is true for p3 it is true for p4 it means if we substitute 1 for n true 2 for n true 3 for n true 4 for n true p5 ke liye true p4 p6 true up to for pn true then we can only say that finally the statement is true this is the principle of induction it means what type of step we have to follow we have to check whether p1 is true p1 is true it means pn n ki value 1 for p1 it is true for pk it is true for pk plus 1 it is true for all k belonging to n it means we we we, we want to keep on checking for for 1 it is true for 2 it is true 3 4 5 6 fine for every k or for every n belonging to n is it true then only we can say that the statement is true technically how we can write it let pn let pn be a predicate involving a natural number involving a natural number n okay suppose two conditions hold suppose two conditions hold first pm is true for some m belonging to n if pk is true pk plus 1 is true where k is greater than equal to m fine now it is true for every n greater than equal to m let us see the example use mathematical induction to prove 1 ka square plus 2 ka square plus 3 ka square up to n ka square is equal to n by 
n plus 1 multiply by 2n plus 1 for all small n it means for all natural numbers that is for all n belonging to natural number fine okay let us take that predicate is pn in general form we can represent this as pn n is variable n can vary n can vary we have to prove this through mathematical induction we have to prove that it means we have to prove 1 ka square plus 2 ka square plus 3 ka square up to n ka square is equal to n by 6 into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 for all n belonging to set of natural numbers. Fine. Let us take pn is our predicate. pn is our predicate. Fine. Okay. Let us take value as 1. Substitute for 1. For 1 just compute n by 6 n plus 1 2n plus 1 okay 1 by 6 n is 1 1 plus 1 2 n n is 1 plus 1 okay this is 1 upon 6 into 2 into 3 is equal to 1 is it clear is it clear? Yes, ma'am. It means for P1, it is true. For P1, it is true. For this one. For P1, it is true. Okay. Now, for K. For K belonging to N. PK is true. Okay. 1 ka square plus 2 ka square plus 3 ka square up to K square. is. It can be represented as because we, here we are using K. K is belonging to N. So instead of n, we can write k. k upon 6, k plus 1, 2k plus 1 is true. When for p1, it is true. For k, it is true. Now we have to check for whether for p k plus 1, any for next value of n, it is true or not. Fine. In this way, you have to see for p k plus 1. For p, k plus 1. 1 ka square plus 2 ka square plus 3 ka square up to k ka square. Okay. This is p, k. This is p, k. You have to do for p, k plus 1. So, so you are having values till k plus 1. Is it clear class? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. This is this is P K. This is P K. One ka square, two ka square, three ka square, plus 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 up to K ka square. Plus, we are taking K plus one. So here, K plus one ka square is equal to is equal to fine K plus one. Here you are having n n. So you will substitute k plus 1. Instead of n, you will write k plus 1. n plus 1. So n plus 1, it means k plus 1 plus 1. So it will be k plus 2. So twice of n plus 1. Yani ki twice of k plus 1 plus 1. Is it clear? It will be 2k plus 2k plus 3. Is it clear? This line is clear? Yes. Okay. Now, now this is what k by 6, k, k by 6, k plus 1. And you have to keep on substituting and checking. It means first you have to check for p1, then pk, then pk plus 1. Fine. And finally, finally you have to check. We have to check. For P1, it is true. For PK, it is true. For PK plus 1, it is true. If for PK plus 1, it is true. It means for general, it, it will be true for every value. It will be true for every predicate value. Fine. It means if PM is true for M belonging to N. If PK is true, then PK plus 1 true. Is it clear? And if K is greater than or equal to M, 
we can say that pn is true for every n greater than equal to m these steps will be clear when you will solve this question are you able to solve this question will you try on yes, your own yes will you try on your own can you try yes we'll try yes can you try this is very interesting question yes, mathematical induction can you try See yes we can one. check for pk then yes, pk plus 1 for one this is one one two into one and so on for pk this will be k by 6 k plus 1 2 k plus 1 For k plus one, it will be k plus one by six, k plus one plus one because this is k. Two k plus one plus one. Fine. And what is interesting is suppose suppose. suppose you you uh, find one value like you find value of pk so in case of pk plus 1 you need to substitute the value here so it is very important to do it step by step and write it properly in the same fashion you can use mathematical induction for for other cases also like 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 for sum of first and natural numbers what is the formula n into n plus 1 by 2 yes class yes yes ma'am yes. that's right yes you can also use uh, suppose pk pk plus 1 and so on you can check for this also fine in this way you can work with the mathematical induction i will give you this solved example fine i will share the ppt with director sir and he will share the ppt with you fine so what we have covered but but you need to practice okay because because tricks are there and tricks will be clear only if you will practice thoroughly fine otherwise you have understood it's good fine but when you will practice on your own then only you will get to know the actual method how we are doing it so just have a layout we had started with methods of proof then valid argument fine then premises implication theorem concept of theorem proof and disproof fine after that mathematical proof then quantifiers for all and there exists for all means for all cases and there exists means some birds can fly it means for some birds for some birds birds for only some birds can fly okay agar if i am writing for all birds it means all birds can fly all birds can fly so this is universal quantifier and this is existential quantifier then to check whether two logical statements are equivalent then proofs then mathematical st statement deduction fine then proving fine using set theory then conjecture fine valid argument using truth table okay then direct proof with the help of tricks direct proof with the help of tricks okay then checking for the hypothesis using direct proof fine after direct proof we have used indirect proof indirect proof through contrapositive and through contradiction in contra positive in contra positive p to q 
so we have done not q implies not p in contra positive fine this these were the examples fine then contradiction fine then it was contradiction a implies b it is equivalent to not b and a is equal to false this is contradiction we have we had taken the examples contradiction then counter example just reversing if p is false not p is true this was the counter example then coming on to principle of induction it uses inductive logic inductive logic here these are these are the steps steps what we have done we have to check for p1 it is true okay for pk it is true okay for pk plus when it is true and how can you you have to use the value of pk in pk plus 1 and finally you have to deduce fine so these these were the slides of today's class fine now just practice i will give you few examples to solve okay i will give you few examples you can solve these examples fine is it clear so these yes, were your these were your methods of proof fine yes class fine yes 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 ma'am okay but you need to practice but you need to practice will you practice yes ma'am okay yes ma'am yes ma'am so, let us close the meeting now fine if you have uh, okay, any thank query, you, you ask, yes, thank you ma'am are you having any query you can ask please you are free to ask any query uh, ma'am can you stop recording uh, at your end okay fine sir yes ma'am yes sir i have stopped yes you have the option to stop the recording so please do that so i have stopped uh it is yet not stopped ma'am i have stopped sir